This is the Jumper T14 Express LRS Edition, and if you've just bought it, or if you're looking to get it, you're going to need to know how to set it up. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the radio itself, and how to get it bound to all of your Express LRS receivers without having to flash to any Express LRS firmware, which is a game changer for version 3. And if you do need to upgrade the firmware, I'll show you how to do that as well. But first, let's get into how to actually navigate using the T14 because it is slightly different to some of the other radios market. The main buttons that we're going to be using today are the menu button, the page button, and the back button, as well as the scroll wheel for navigating left and right, which also doubles as the enter button when you press it. The menu button has two functions. The first is if you press it once, it takes you into the models menu, whilst if you hold it down, it takes you into the system menu. The other thing about the T14 is it comes pre-flashed with version three of Express LRS, as well as having the Lewis group pre-installed. So you're not gonna have to worry about those two things. With that out of the way, now let's get into how to set up the radio itself. After powering on the radio, we're gonna hold down the menu button to go into the system menu. You'll see Express LRS there, that's the Lewis script. We're gonna press enter to open it. I'm going to show you my preferred settings for Express LRS, but the reason why we're checking the Lewis script first is to make sure everything is working correctly. The first thing I always do is I go and set the TX power to 1000 milliwatts. So scroll down to TX power and hit enter. Hit for max power, hit enter, and then scroll to 1000 milliwatts and hit enter again. Dynamic, we want to set to off and fan threshold to 250 milliwatts before scrolling down and pressing back. I set my packet rate to 250 hertz. Next, I set telemetry ratio to one to 32. I also set the switch mode to hybrid switches and I typically leave model match off. From here, we're gonna hit the back button twice to go back to the main screen. Now we're gonna press the menu button once to go into the model setup. We can see here we're on the model select, which is page one of 12, and we're gonna press the page button to go into page two, which is setup. The first thing we're gonna do here is scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna turn off trainer mode. So we're gonna select the model and we're gonna tap across to the setup page. We're now gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom for trainer mode. We wanna set that to off. Now we're gonna scroll all the way back up to the top and we're gonna change our model name. Press enter on model name and this is going to select the first character. Don't worry about what case the characters are because holding down the enter button changes the case from upper to lower and vice versa. Simply scroll across and select the character. When you're ready, hit enter. Or holding down enter to change the case also confirms and moves on. Go and do this to set your model name to whatever you want. I normally use Express LRS. After you've set your model name, we're going to scroll all the way down to internal RF. Now, if yours is set to off, you want to hit enter on mode and scroll across to CRSF. If you only have multi, that means you've got multi-protocol version of the Jumper T14, not the Express LRS one. So if you want to use Express LRS with the multi-protocol version, you need to set internal RF to off, external RF to CRSF, then you need to get an Express LRS module, which you plug in the back. If you fly Crossfire, Tracer, Ghost, or even Express RS 900 megahertz, set internal to off and external to CRSF, and then plug in an external module in the back. If you've got the JP401 version of the T14, do the same and get your Express RS module and plug it into the back as well. You wanna make sure external module is set to off if you're using the internal transmitter module on the T14. Here's a handy tip. If you want to use the T14 for the simulator, after you finish creating the model, duplicate it, and then go back into the model setup page and scroll down to internal RF as well as external. Set both to off. And then when you connect to the simulator via USB, you won't have your internal or external module powered up transmitting, A, transmitting for no reason, and also it's not gonna add any RF noise and waste battery, so you're gonna get more simulator time. Just remember, since we're gonna be using the internal module for Express LRS, we wanna set that to CRSF. Once we've done that, we're gonna press the page button to a couple of times until we get to the inputs page. 
Before we set up our imports, this is where we're actually gonna need to get a drone and connect it to Betaflight because we do need to know the channel map already on our quad. We're now gonna hit connect. And what we wanna do is go down to the receiver tab. And you can see here in the receiver tab under channel map, I have ATER1234. And what that means is I have ailerons, throttle, elevator, rudder, channels one, two, three, four. And I need to now make sure that on my radio, the channel map is the same. Couple of things to note here. This is your first FPV radio and you only have one quad, then it's actually gonna be easiest to change the channel map in Betaflight rather than having to go through the process of changing the channel map in your radio. But if you're like me, if you already have a ton of drones that have a channel map pre-configured and this is a new radio for you, don't wanna go and adjust the channel map in your entire fleet, recommend changing the channel map on your radio. So we're gonna head into Betaflight and we're gonna click connect. And then we're gonna head down to the receiver tab. And you can see here, my channel map is ATER1234. So meanwhile, we can see in the radio, the channel map is already RETA. Let's head into beta flight and change that to match the channel map. So we can see here we're on the receiver tab and we've got the channel map ATER. We wanna change that to RETA1234 and then press save. You've just done that because this is your first radio. Drop a comment below that says first radio, then skip ahead to the chapter called Ox Channels. But if you like me, and this is just an upgrade or a replacement radio, and you've got a ton of quads with an existing channel map, let me show you how to do that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the radio and we're gonna have to delete all four of these inputs. So we're gonna press the enter button and then delete. Scroll down to the next, enter and delete, and do that for all four of these inputs. I do prefer to change it on the inputs rather than the mixes, just so I make sure that the inputs are correct. But you can leave the inputs as is and also update it on the mixes only want. But I'll show you both. Now we're gonna scroll back to input number one and we're gonna hit enter. We're gonna scroll down to source and press enter. And now when we move a stick, it's going to change the source. Now, my first one is ailerons, which is roll. So I'm going to move the roll stick and then press the back button twice. I'm going to go into channel two, scroll down to source and hit enter. And for me, this was throttle. So I'm going to move the throttle, hit the back button twice. Channel three was elevator. So I'm going to move the pitch stick and hit the back button twice. Channel four was yaw or rudder. So again, scroll down to source, hit enter, move the rudder or the yaw, and then back twice. Now we can page over to the mixes. You'll see the mixes are set up with channel one, 100, I, zero, one. That means that this mix for channel one corresponds to I input number one. So you don't actually need to change these now and you can go straight to channel five. But if you wanted to leave your inputs as default and purely set your channel map in the mixes tab, this is how you'd do that. The first thing we're gonna do is, like I just showed you on the inputs, is we're gonna to have to go and delete all these existing channels. Then we're gonna hit enter for mix number one, scroll down to source and hit enter. You can set the different area at which the source is coming from. Because it's gonna be the sticks, this is the axis. So we're gonna hit enter. We're gonna hit enter on the axis and we're gonna scroll across to A for ailerons and then hit back to confirm and go back twice and now go to channel two, go down to source and hit enter, select access. We're gonna to go to T for throttle. Scroll down to channel three and to source and go to axis and then E for elevator. And then channel four, again, the same for access and R for rudder. Express Luris requires that channel five, also known as aux one, is used for arming and disarming. And that's because like the four input channels, your sticks, channel five is also sent on every packet. Whereas the other switches, such as channels six, seven, eight, or aux two, three, four, 
they're sent on every other packet. And this is so that only the crucial information is sent every single packet. So, but the other thing is Express LRS also requires that arming and disarming be done on a two position switch. So you can see here, SA is two positions, it's either on or it's off. The SE button or shoulder button is either on or it's off. Whereas the SC switch is a three position switch and it's on and it's got three positions and all three of them can have a value. And if you are going to use a three position switch, well, ExpressLRS is only going to send an off or an on and anyway. So the first two positions on this switch are going to be treated as off, whilst the third is going to be treated as on and it's a waste of a switch. For me, I prefer to use SA as my arming and disarming switch rather than the shoulder buttons because I have a number of different radios and they all have the same SA two position switch. So it just makes it easier from a muscle memory perspective. And like before, we're gonna scroll down to source and hit enter. And then we flick the switch that we wanna use and hit back twice. Now we're gonna to go to channel six, press enter, down to source. And once that's flashing, we're gonna flick the switch that we wanna use for channel six or aux two. We're going to repeat this process for channels 7, 8 and 9 and do this until all of the switches are assigned to channels. Now we've got the on radio setup of the jumper T14 done, we now need to take care of the express LRS setup, in other words to get our binding phrase on there so we can get it bound to our quad. The good news is if all of your drones are using version 3 of express LRS, there's actually a really quick trick that doesn't involve flashing. But you are going to be subject to the firmware that comes with the Jumper T14 and not the latest version. Keep in mind, when you buy a radio, I would actually recommend upgrading to the latest version once you do get it, because there could be bug fixes that bring better stability and better performance to the radio. But after that, I really just keep it all on the same major firmware. This might be running 3.4, whilst this is running 3.1 or 3.2. So... As long as they're all on version 3, what I'm about to show you is going to get them bound really, really quickly. So we're going to hold down the menu button to go into the system menu and go into the ExpressLRS Lua script. We're then going to scroll down to Wi-Fi connectivity and hit enter and enable Wi-Fi. This is going to create an ExpressLRS wireless access point or Wi-Fi network that we can connect to from our computer in order to access the ExpressLRS web interface. So we're going to go to the ExpressLRS TX Wi-Fi network and we're going to type in ExpressLRS in lower case, which is the Wi-Fi password. I'm going to click. Now when we go to 10.0.1, it's going to go straight to the ExpressLRS web configurator. And it's here where we can actually set our binding phrase without having to flash ExpressLRS. So under the options tab and under runtime options, we're going to type in our binding phrase. We're going to hit save and it's going to say upload succeeded and we can reboot. Hit reboot. You'll know the reboot is successful because you will be disconnected from the Wi-Fi access point and it will no longer show Wi-Fi running on the Lua script on your radio. After this is done, I'd also recommend power cycling your radio just to make sure that the settings have been applied. The good news is, as long as your radio and your receiver are now running the exact same binding phrase, which is case sensitive, you've just bound all of your gear and you didn't need to flash Express LRS. Amazing. But if you did want to update the firmware, which I recommend you should when you get a new radio or when there's a major release, such as version 4, 5, so forth, then let's go and do that now. Now, in order to flash Express LRS, if you haven't already got the configurator, this is where you're going to head over to Google and you're going to search for Express LRS configurator. If you're not familiar with where you're going, I'd recommend going to the Express LRS website first. Then you can go to the configurator setup and you can see download. This is going to take you to GitHub where you can download the version of the Express LRS configurator relevant to your computer. Download that and install it. After that's been installed, we're gonna grab a USB-C cable and pop it in the top. Then when the mode comes up, we're gonna select USB serial VCP. Now we're gonna open up the ExpressLRS configurator. 
So under the releases, you want to select the latest release. Under device category, you can start typing jumper. And we want to select jumper 2.4 if you have the 2.4 gigahertz version of the radio. And we're going to select jumper T14 2.4 gigahertz TX. Flashing method is going to be edge TX pass through. Regulatory domain, we're going to use ISM 2400. Unless you're in Japan or Europe and you want to adhere to those laws, ASM2400 is going to be best for most people because it's going to give you the full one watt of output power. I'd also recommend putting in your home Wi-Fi, SSID and password. When you need to update it in the future, if your radio hasn't bound to a receiver within 60 seconds, it's automatically going to connect to your home Wi-Fi network and it's going to make updating really, really simple. Then you want to go and set your binding phrase. Make sure this is the same as all your other Express LRS gear, and it is case sensitive as well. Now, if this is the first time you're flashing, it is gonna take a few minutes because it's gonna download the firmware, compile it, and then flash it. But if you've done this a few times before, it'll be really quick. You don't actually need to update the Lua script if we just flashed a version 3 of ExpressLRS because it already came with it on there. You're watching this video and there is a version 4 and there is a new Lua script release, then you probably should update it. But for most people, you don't need to update the Lua script, so don't worry. Now when you turn on your radio and you power up your quad, everything should work. I'd recommend taking your props off, plugging in a LiPo, and doing a test arm um, and test inside of your house just to make sure everything reacts correctly. I also recommend plugging it into Betaflight and making sure that all the channels when you move the sticks, moves the right channel, all works before you get out into the field and you try and take off and the quad flips out and it doesn't work because you obviously didn't do something. Now, if this video has been a great help for you, you can say thank you by hitting the subscribe button and dropping me a comment just simply to say thanks. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.